From popular cartoon characters to colorful, glittery shapes, today's piñatas are a big hit at kids' parties, where children eagerly await the decisive blow that breaks open the piñata, releasing the treats inside. The traditional way to build one starts with a clay pot suspended from a string. The piñata maker glues cardboard shapes to it and secures them by gluing on pieces of newspaper. Then she covers the rest of the pot. When the glue dries, she decorates the surface with colorful paper. The modern method is to use a balloon instead of a clay pot. After inflating the balloon, she pastes pieces of newspaper all over it. This technique is known as paper mache. The trick is to completely saturate the newspaper with the thick paste and make sure no part of the balloon is left uncovered. She continues this process until she's built up two or three even layers of newspaper all over the balloon. Then she suspends it from a clothespin to dry. Hours later, the paper mache has hardened into a shell around the balloon, which she now breaks and removes. Next, she cuts an opening at the top of the shell. This is the hole through which the buyer will fill the piñata with treats. She'll later reattach the cut piece to make a trap door. But first, with the sharp tips of her scissors, she pierces a row of holes along the circumference and threads twine through them. She leaves long ends at the top with which to suspend the piñata. This piñata will be star-shaped. To make each point, she rolls thin cardboard into a cone, taping it closed. She trims it to the required size, then cuts tabs at the base and bends them back. She makes seven of these cardboard points, then tapes them onto the shell one by one. Once all seven are positioned, the decorating with colorful glittery foil wrapping paper can begin. She tapes a sheet around each point of the star. Then she applies glue in between the points and adheres pieces of wrapping paper to those areas. She folds other pieces into flower shapes and glues them on as well. Once the entire piñata is covered, she tapes matching streamers to the end of each point. Historians believe Spanish missionaries used star piñatas like this one to convert the native peoples in the Americas to Christianity. The star symbolized Satan, its seven points, the seven deadly sins, its beautiful colors, temptation. Wearing a blindfold represented blind faith in God. Striking the piñata with a stick meant goodness and virtue battling evil. Breaking the piñata and releasing a shower of treats or trinkets symbolized heavenly rewards. Garbage trucks have different approaches to handling garbage. Some load from the front, others from the rear or side. And some are entirely mechanized, like this side loader truck. The operator inside the cab barely needs to lift a finger as the hydraulic lift arm does all the heavy work. 
The garbage truck has come a long way since it hit the street in 1952. Production on a modern side loader truck begins with a welding robot. The robot fuses numerous steel supports to the truck body floor. These supports will allow the truck to hold up to the force of tons of trash being compacted inside. Meanwhile, down the line, other parts, like the roof and sides, take shape in separate assemblies. Once they're complete, they hoist the large steel parts into place and assemble them within a metal framework. The framework serves as a guide to piece together all the parts of the truck box. Once assembled, the workers clamp the parts together to secure the assembly as they weld the seams. The garbage truck body is then ready for the mechanized parts, beginning with the hopper. It's equipped with a powerful hydraulic compactor to squeeze as much trash as possible into the truck. They fit the hopper snugly to the front of the truck body and weld it to it. Then they lift the tailgate into position at the rear of the truck box. They hinge it to the truck by sliding heavy-duty steel pins through brackets. Once hinged, the tailgate can swing up and out of the way to allow garbage to be discharged. The driving force for this is a pair of hydraulic cylinders attached by brackets welded to the tailgate at one end and the truck body at the other. With that job done, these cylinders can now extend to lift the tailgate and retract to close it. Across the factory floor, another team assembles a pair of steel lift arms. These lift arms are designed for another kind of truck, the front end loader. It's mainly used to collect hefty commercial garbage containers. In action, these arms pivot around the truck cab and extend to the front to fork up the trash container and deposit the contents in the hopper. Hydraulic cylinders also power these lift arms. When the task is complete, the forks at the end of the arms fold back out of the way. Nearby, workers test this rear loader garbage truck. Its tailgate is split into two hoppers, one for recyclables and the other for trash. Hydraulic systems lift them one at a time or simultaneously. Collecting garbage and disposing of it can be tough on a truck's paint job, so they apply an extra durable finish. They spray sealer on the sanded outer surface, followed by two coats of epoxy paint. After that, they bake on the layers. Meanwhile, the truck chassis has arrived from another factory. It's a standard size, so they chop a piece off to size it to the garbage truck body. They install bracket plates at the back and slide thick pins through the holes to join the truck body to the chassis. Using a crane, they lift the automated side loader truck body onto the modified chassis. Once it's installed, they test the compactor. Dual hydraulic cylinders push the ejector blade to the back of the truck. They test the tailgate, which has now been equipped with signal lights, mud flaps, and other parts, and verify that everything functions properly. Once a truck passes muster, it's ready to handle whatever garbage society throws its way. And with these automated garbage trucks, there's no need for anyone to strain their back or get their hands dirty because these robot arms can handle it. <laughs>